let's talk about the menu which I saw last night at the AMC Burbank 16. Uh, let me let me we have to we kind of always have to do like a little reset when we're when we're talking about uh, films here. Uh, but let's talk about the menu. It is a black horror comedy that stars Ray Fiennes as a infamous chef. His name is Julian Slowick. And attending are a bunch of very rich people because it is thousands of dollars per plate to go to this restaurant that's on a remote island. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy plays Margot, who's going with her boyfriend, Nicholas Holt, uh, named Tyler. Not necessarily a boyfriend, because what you do is you find out later that she was a last-minute replacement. He was originally going to take another girl and invited her last minute, so they are fresh in the relationship but they make their way on this boat to this island with a cast of characters. Uh, you've got uh, John Leg Leguizamo. He plays this like movie star who's going there with his assistant who he's, he's obviously there's some shenanigans going on with there. There's an older couple uh, obviously in, in the midst of some marital woes. There are some tech bros. There are a table of tech bros Three, three dudes that are here for the experience and and their boss is actually uh, uh, the main investor in the restaurant, this exquisite experience. It's not just a restaurant. It's one of those like eight course meals that, you know, th these small tastes that are sumptuous. Of course, uh, Tyler, played by Nicholas Holt, is taking a picture of every single dish that comes out, which is verboten in this restaurant. Uh, Ray Fiennes runs these, this restaurant like a, uh, gosh, like someone who's uh, like, like he's the head of a concentration camp, just constantly he comes out and for every, every, uh, uh, course he comes out and claps and everyone stands at attention almost in military fashion. And the chefs are there with tweezers carefully curating the placement of twigs on their dishes. Each dish has a story uh, that, that is telling a tale that will be the theme of the night. Okay. And uh, what I love about, about the film is that um, first of all, the humor is like right there. It's a lot like trying, it reminds me of triangle of sadness or even in some ways, parts of parasite where this movie makes fun of rich people. It, it's, it's mocking the elites and people who have enough money to spend to go to a restaurant like this, and then the type of people that they are. And of course, we come to find out that they're all horrible people. Horrible. Um, uh, what's, what's interesting and fun about the film is that each time a course is introduced, they show a close-up of the dish, and they list the ingredients and description of the dish you know, as Ray Fiennes is talking about it. And it's, it's, it's kind of funny. It's almost like reality TV, like, like here's the dish and here's everything that went into the dish. And um, the descriptions of it are of every single dish are so pretentious. They're so in obviously intentionally over the top as to just be laughable. Right. Uh, there's a character named Elsa played by Hong Chao. And uh, she's the main, main assistant. She's sort of the head uh, sort of uh, Ray Fiennes' characters, um, number one, so to speak. And the island is bizarre and mysterious. As they, as they, you know, get to the island, they're getting this tour. They're showing how the meat, the meat is, is you know, cured for like 152 days, not 153, not 151, 152. Like everything is so perfectly done. It's, um, it's an anal retentive chef's dream. Right. And each course is an experience um, as uh, Margot and Tyler there, things start to unravel between the two of them. She realizes like there's a different placement card of a of another woman's name, which was his um, previous his girlfriend before, you know, that relationship ended. He invited Margot to show up, not knowing much about Margot. And we come to find out that Margot is not she's not down with the elites. She's sort of a, a working girl so to speak, um, and more from the lower class, right? So this whole experience smacks of bullshit. You know, she even threatens to like send one of the courses back to which Tyler is horrified. Tyler's like a super fan of the sh of uh, Ray Fine's character, like the chef, and, and he's secretly taking 
pictures of, you know, the dishes, which he's not supposed to do. No photos allowed. Uh, things really start to unravel by the third course where they get these uh, tacos and printed on all the tortillas are things that are incredi incredibly incriminating for each of the characters. You know, there's on the tortillas for Tyler is a photo imprinted, a 3D printed a photo of him taking pictures of the meal, which literally just happened like 10 minutes ago. Um, each of the other characters on their tortillas are all sorts of incriminating and horrible personal information that's now being revealed to each character. It's over the top. It's, it is funny. I love black humor. Uh, I will say, uh, so I really enjoyed myself. I actually really liked the film, except thinking about it a little bit more. It, I kind of felt like the characters would have done something different because they're put in a position, they're put in positions where their lives are at stake. And it occurs to me, why don't they do something? And this will occur to you too. The final scene, the final scene of the movie is so over the top and bizarre. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to ruin anything from the last half of the movie. So I really can't talk about it much beyond what you've just heard. But uh, I found it funny, entertaining, but a little, it almost needed to go either more over the top or at least add a couple lines of dialogue to explain why these people are just sort of trapped in the experience and sort of unable to overcome these, these oppressive chefs. Uh, overall, I would still recommend it. I'd still recommend it, you know, sort of ranks as like a six or a seven for me if I had to, if I was forced to give it a number rating, although I hate stuff like that. Uh, but I quite enjoyed it just because of the dark humor. Ray Fiennes is great. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, he's often, he's, he's awesome. Um, and he's great in this role. I really enjoyed it. So are you allowed to say that everything you described here, is this most of the movie or is this? That's person? the whole movie. The whole movie takes place just in, the in one the location. So once they kind of get from the boat to the island, they get the tour and they're sitting now having dinner. The entire movie is them having dinner. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole dinner. Uh, can I just say one thing also I really loved about the film that I cannot stress enough how amazing it was. The movie is an hour and 47 minutes with credits. Ah, <laughs> oh, chef's kiss. Uh, a movie it's that's like under, an hour and 35, basically. A movie that's under two hours. <laughs> Alan, finally. Yeah. I'm just glad they, someone's making movies like that again. <laughs> I mean, it was fantastic. And uh, I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. The fact that it was just like, it's like a tight script. It's never boring. I had to go to the bathroom during the movie. I did not get up and leave. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it's a lot of fun. And and it's just, it's just that if you think about some of the logic, there are some lapses in logic that, that bothered me, in particular at the end of the movie. Um, I, I don't want to, I, 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 yeah. yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to say exactly what it is, but um, yeah, so what you're check. saying for the most part, it's a good movie, but it didn't really stick the landing. I don't know that it didn't stick the landing. It did stick the landing. And then I was sitting there thinking about it. And as we all went out in the hall and we were like, oh my God, it's so great to see a good movie. It's not a superhero movie we're ripping apart. It's just a good entertaining, entertaining mm -hmm. movie. Anya Taylor-Joy is, I mean, she's amazing. The camera loves her. Yeah. Um, and it's really also refreshing to see, um, an attractive woman in a movie and she's allowed to be attractive, right? Like I feel like there is a almost desexualization -sexual of women in films, uh, unfortunately, but I will say um, this movie was delicious. Holy fucking shit. These reviews are delicious. Fucking shit, these reviews are delicious. Okay, okay, it was delicious. <laughs> I it. Sorry, I had it on loop. I had it on loop there. Uh, but no, I, I really enjoyed the film. It's just that, like, but see, this is good. Look, what do I want to do? I want to see a movie and walk out and go and forget it. A lot of action movies mm -hmm. I'll see, or a lot of like just sort of um, what was that forgettable kind of horror movie I saw with uh the exorcism a couple weeks ago? Pray, uh, pray for the devil. 
Yeah, pray for the devil. It's like I walk out and it's just like I'm forgetting half the movie as I'm walking out because I've seen it before. It's like there was nothing the other than having a female protagonist, it wasn't really interesting. Um, and this movie was this it was you know conversation worthy, in particular because now we're starting to see a lot of films where the villain are the elites. This is what I hope is the new villain going forward in film, right? It's it's normally been just uh, white men, right? White men are bad, right? That's the villain, right? It's just, it gets, not that that's not a good villain to have, but it gets tired if that's always the case. And I think what we've seen in movies like Triangle of Sadness and The Menu is that, um, you know, it's the elites, right? And the elites come in all, all types, colors, shades, ages, etc. The Tech Bros storyline is particularly interesting because there's a connection to the, the restaurant itself because their boss funded the return of this of this restaurant. Um, but it's it's basically what I feel is that some of the events of the film become unbelievable by the end. I just didn't buy it. But it made for a great post-film conversation. Like, I kind of know if a movie's good, if we walk, or at least worth, if it's worth discussing after the movie. So after mm -hmm. we walked out, we sort of congregated in the hall and other people who I didn't even know started joining in the conversation. Then we all went to Yard House, where that woman was doing drugs in the bathroom and disrupted the entire restaurant. It was bizarre. Um, but we had this whole conversation about the film. Like, well, why are we still talking about the film? It had an effect on us. Yeah. And if anything, yeah, I movies want, used to do that. Remember <laughs> what I want is a movie that affects me that I'm moved by. So there you go. Let's go to yeah. conversation. No, I was going to say, we, we had a conversation after black Panther, uh, Wakanda forever. Yeah. But it wasn't a pleasant one. <laughs> uh...